For those of you who know me, you know I've spent the previous six years working in the weird world of women's wellness, often contradictory, I would definitely say. And I am, you know, while we're living through this health pandemic, this global health pandemic, I've been unpacking a lot of a lot of the, uh, you know, drama and trauma that went down through those many years. And I've been reading a lot and writing a lot. So thank you for everyone who's been working with me on all of the writing, which I've been doing and helping and editing that. And there are a lot of you and you've been great. So thank you. And then also some of the books I've been reading, one of them that really has stuck out in the last few weeks is Lee Stein's Self Care which is all about the world of millennial girl bosses and the wellness space and the, the very interesting dramas that unfold, which feel very real to life, as well as a criticism on our current culture. So um, this book is out June 30th, and I highly recommend you can pre-order it. I highly recommend that you do. I think you're gonna enjoy it. I tore through it and I wrote a review that I wanted to share because it got me super excited um, just thinking about what I liked about the book and I wanted to share that with you. So I said that even though I've been traumatized by the world of women's wellness, that I was drawn to this book like bougie basic betches are drawn to the class by Taryn Toomey. Lee Stein's Self Care is a darkly comedic celery juice and organic gin cocktail that I tossed back and it uh, helped me process the mixture of my absurd and bitter memories, some of them of my own somewhat self-inflicted pain as a uh, female leader at a well-known Healthy Living website. And yeah, those are the, who have been there, you guys, you all know. So I think you'll appreciate the, this book and where Lee gets a lot of the details. Another thing that when I was reading this book that really came to mind and it's kind of a little metaphor, but I believe that self-care is the insightful, witty, well-toned, high-achieving love child born after a Williamsburg loft party where the movie Heathers had a threesome with Dave Eggers' The Circle and Anna Wiener's Uncanny Valley while watching their lithesome reflection in Gia Tolentino's Trick Mirror. What I'm saying is I couldn't look away or put this book down the whole time I was reading it. It's one of those, you just want to tear through it, but it has a lot of great insightful um, remarks and details that just get it so right. Stein, Lee Stein, she shines a uh, LED selfie light on the dark ways that sickness is sold to us as health for the profit of businesses, brands, and influencers, along with our own very closest frenemies. Like the most in-demand women's lifestyle Instagrammers who are distilled to essence by Stein in the character of Devin Avery, she's nailing all the details down to the placement of the windowsill succulents and the meditation cushions and the bamboo floors. I can't tell you how many times there was that the character Devin orders hot water and lemon out with others, and I can't tell you how many times um, during living while running a women's website we would take self-care influencers out to fancy meals at restaurants in West Hollywood and they would also order the hot water with lemon maybe as their only thing or if they were feeling really indulgent they would ask the waiter so how's the asparagus cooked and then order a pl uh, side plate of steamed veggies as their main course and only item along with that uh, along with the uh, hot water and lemon. And of course, I'd be drinking cocktails and you know, I don't know, maybe maybe that's not healthy living, but it was for me, I, I felt pretty healthy. I mean, I'm healthy, right? <laughs> so, um, but more about Lee Stein because I was just overwhelmed by how she had her finger on the pulse of all the details. She really had all those clickbaity, so bad they're gold headlines, like the real reason you need a snack and ancient fasting wisdom that will blow your mind and clear your gut, as well as some of the competitive and formulaic first-person confessionals, uh, I said, squeezed in a cold press from our most soul-crushing real-life experiences. Lee Stein smartly critiques the current culture. One of the quotes from the book that I put in my review is, in the attention economy, thoughtful solutions had so little value. What you did wrong was more engaging than what you did right. I think a lot of us out there can understand that quote. 
And Stein delivers sardonic laughs with goat yoga, woke quasi-feminist slogans on branded tchotchkes, and a photo series uh, that the women that run this website have called Healing Crystal or Dildo of Antiquity. And while it's sort of mockumentary styled, I can see a lot of women's websites having a series like that, and maybe some have had some things that are very close to it, or they've definitely considered them in editorial meetings. I cracked a dark smile when I read the description of Devon. Her arms were pale, unblemished, delicately defined in the Tracy Anderson mode. The scent of her body was sweat and period blood, hardly masked by her useless natural deodorant. I thought to myself when I read that, I know that girl. And then I was like, actually, I know about a hundred of that girl. <laughs> Marin, Devon's co-founder and the editorial leader for the social um, network, that self-care social network they've created, it's called Ritual in the book, She's the character I most relate to, and she is thinking to herself in one scene, I kept my phone next to me on the couch while we ate, just in case it buzzed or rang. This must be how surgeons felt. I might be needed in an emergency. No, working online was worse than being a surgeon. Your career as a surgeon didn't continue in virtual space while you slept, or ate breakfast, or had sex, or shopped at Fairway. Yep, 100%. So for me personally, I'm pretty sure I was forcing myself to take, I can remember doing this, calming yogic ujjayi pranayama breaths as my hands were racing through the pages toward the end with the story's stomach churning conclusion. And I'm, I'm pleased to say, cause it was like, whew, I was like holding my breath toward the end that Lee Stein sticks the landing with rapid pacing and poise. And in conclusion, I wish I had written this book I thought that at the ending and I thought it several times throughout while I was reading it, pretty much all throughout. And so therefore, because I'm somewhat jealous, but yet I also love to support my fellow women that are out there and killing it. As you all know, I highly recommend that you get Lee's book because um, it definitely opens up the world of uh, women's wellness in some, some pretty heavy ways.